So in today's video, we're going to talk about uh, some orthopedic uh, diseases. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, osteochondritis dissecans, which primarily affects the elbows, uh, sorry, primarily affects the knees, and uh, it can also affect the elbow and ankle. And then after I'm done with this, we're going to talk uh, real quickly about another common condition called uh, osgood Schlatter, which is common in, actually in the uh, teenage group. So let's first talk about uh, osteochondrosis uh, Osteochondritis dissecans. Uh, so what this is is uh, just in, just as a rough overview. Uh, it's when uh, the articular surface of the uh, in this case the knee bone uh, breaks down, and w once it breaks down, it exposes the actual bone underneath. So uh, and that's pretty much all you have uh, with osteochondritis dissecans. That's it. So the most common, the first most common is uh, joint affected is the knee, about seventy five percent. Uh, then the ankle, uh, followed by the elbow. So it's um, kind of confined to these three uh, ideas. Now, if it happens in the juvenile uh, juvenile age, so there's also a, ju a juvenile uh, osteochondritis dissecans. Uh, this generally is uh, called when the epiphysis has not fused. So when the epiphysis is open, uh, then we call this a juvenile form. And this is uh, generally uh, because it's due to kind of the uh, ab uh, abnormal epiphyseal development. And, uh, and, and this is also more commonly uh, uh, have a family history of this condition. Uh, so what are the causes um, of this condition? Um, the, first, the first thing is idiopathic. So sometimes you don't necessarily find any cause uh, whatsoever. Uh, the second is going to be avascular necrosis. So uh, you're going to get some type of vascular impingement um, and that's going to lead to uh, slowly degradation of the cartilage and it's going to finally uh, break off or, or get weaker. Uh, the, and, and the avascular necrosis oftentimes is due to some sort of impingement. Uh, and this could be from the tibial spine, which is, uh, so if the tibial spine is too long uh, this can lead to um, impingement and then finally it can uh, break off. Um, and uh, this can also be due to some type of uh, trauma, so some type of blow, uh, which causes impaction of the joint, uh, either rotatory or it could be uh, some type of joint compression uh, can also uh, lead to uh, uh, osteochondritis uh, dissecans. Um, so now within the knee, there are some com uh, some areas which are more common than others. Uh, the first part is going to be the lateral side of the medial epicondyle. This is the most common uh, a site right out here. But of course, you can have a medial side and even you can have on the lateral epicondyle and uh, the patella as well, which isn't shown here, but you can also get it uh, on the patella. So uh, what will be the clinical findings? Um, nothing major. Generally, you know, there'll be a young kid who has some type of vague uh, knee pain they start beginning com uh, uh, complaining of that and, uh, and and it will slowly worsen worsen uh, there there might be some uh, parapatellar tenderness so as you palpate uh, around the patella you will you know they will uh, feel some uh, pain and there will also be uh, pain with range of motion and this is elicited by the Wilson test and so what the Wilson test does is uh, you ask the patient to uh, have their knees flexed at 90 degrees so they have their uh, their knees like this, this so that's their uh, foot and you ask them to immediately rotate their foot so their foot if this is their foot you and um, so if these are their feet you ask them to immediately rotate both of their feet and then you ask them to slowly lift up their uh, their, their leg as well as straight generally at 30 degrees they will feel pain. So that's called the Wilson's test. Um, also, you know, you can get uh, quadriceps atrophy. This is just because when they feel pain, they're not they're going to use uh, that muscle a lot less. Now, eventually, of course, we're going to talk a little bit uh, when we talk about the different stages. Uh, this piece can fall off. Like in this situation, it has already. Uh, once you have a loose fragment there, you get uh, symptoms associated with that. So this can be uh, crepitations. Uh, also, uh, some type of popping uh, sensation, uh, and and then what they also complain about is kind of like a locking and then suddenly giving way. And this is just the loose fragment uh, getting caught into the articular surface and then getting out of the way and then mo moving over. And um, 
if there is a fusion, uh, then this becomes classified as an unstable, uh, uh, unstable uh, condition. So uh, let's talk about the different classifications because we already kind of uh, discussed it. Um, so the uh, this diagram here uh, shows all the uh, various uh, classifications. So uh, stage one is going to be where it's in situ. So this one is just compressible. Uh, so if you take, you know, when you do the uh, keyhole type of surgeries and you kind of push out, you see it's a little bit weakened. So th these can only be seen with the uh, keyhole surgeries. Very tough to find them in. I uh, see them in uh, uh, x-rays. Then the other type is when you have a partial, or this is called an early uh, uh, separation, where it's uh, only in certain areas is broken off, but it's not completely uh, not completely broken off. Then incomplete detachment, uh, what you'll have is it's completely broken off, but still sitting in this crater. And then finally, you have complete detachment, where it actually uh, falls off, and that's when you have the crepitations, uh, the popping feeling, and the locking and giving away. So what's the uh, first thing that you would do as far as investigations go? Um, the you would you would first want to do an X-ray, uh, and again they, they actually they say just a lot uh, oftentimes with the uh, clinical you can uh, that that gives you a lot of ideas as well. But uh, generally you want to do an X-ray, and what you'll see is if you look at this surface here, it's a nice smooth surface, and then here you you notice that it's not smooth anymore. So the primary thing that you're looking for in uh, x-ray is going to be an uneven uh, 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 surface of the, of the uh, uh, cartilage. So uh, this is usually enough to diagnose it, however you do need to do an MRI uh, to, um, to kind of look at the severity of it. So here's an MRI, here's two MRIs, one lateral, one uh, sagittal. Uh, so you can see here, it, it, it just highlights um, the overall where and you can see it's kind of separated here so it's kind of telling you this is a uh, det uh, complete detachment here so you have uh, you have it over there as well so so for purposes of staging and checking out severity you need to do this as well um, now how would you treat it so let's talk about let's talk about treatment uh, first line of treatment is non-surgical uh, you know primarily just kind of uh, you want to focus on you know supportive type of uh, I think so. First, let's talk about the non-surgical uh, options. So you just want to uh, have no weight bearing, and this can be done with crutches. Uh, it can be done with the brace and, un and the unloader brace specifically, uh, which so that give it time to heal. Uh, and so you do this, you know, for a few weeks. Uh, see if the pain goes away, and then you can uh, do repeat uh, MRIs and X-rays to see if it's improved at all. And then you can slowly introduce. Uh, exercise, so they're going to be, uh, you know, they're going to be involved in um, physiotherapy. Uh, this is a big physiotherapy uh, type of deal. So, and, and as slowly it improves, they start increasing their exercises, and then usually, you know, after a while, it will improve. Um, but if it doesn't improve, uh, your second option is surgery. Uh, there are a few surgeries that are used for this. Uh, the first one is going to be arthroscopic drilling, uh, and what arthroscopic drilling does is you just drill holes uh, into the actual cartilage. So uh, let's see, we have the, the image here. So you actually drill little holes into the cartilage. Why, why do they do that? Because once you drill the holes, uh, this actually stimulates re regeneration and growth. So you can try to stimulate that uh, and, and, give, and, and give bone healing uh, that way. Uh, if there is uh, a fragment, uh, you're going to do a fragment fixation. So if the fragment has came off, you can actually uh, nail them in back into where they're supposed to be. Uh, the other thing is going to be an autograph transfer. So if you can't find the fragment or if the, the fragment's uh, dissolved or something, you can take uh, from the non weight so you can take a piece from the non-weight non bearing area. So say over here, and you can move it to a weight bearing area so where it touches. So that's called an autograph uh, transfer uh, there. Uh, you can also do a chondrocyte transplant. And this is actually interesting. What they'll do is they'll go in, they'll take some chondrocytes, and then they'll harvest those chondrocytes for about four to six weeks until they become bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they'll go back in and then they'll uh, put the patient's own uh, graft uh, back into the uh, location where the chondrocyte is, uh, or the, not the chondrocyte, but the cartilage is missing. Uh, and finally, you can do an allograft. Uh, an allograft is generally reserved if there's a 
large lesion greater than 25 millimeters. Uh, and in this case, what you want to do is you just want to take uh, cartilage from the cadaver and then plug up the hole uh, that is there. So that is uh, osteochondritis desiccans. Um, after this, we can talk about uh, another condition called Osgood uh, Schlatter. So what is, a, uh, what is the pathogenesis here? Uh, basically what happens is uh, chronic overuse as a child. So uh, the patient, generally about you know, 9 to 14 years old, uh, you know, just uh, kind of finishing up the growth spurt or in the, in the process of the growth spurt. And what they do is with chronic overuse, uh, they start to damage this area here, which is called the, let me use the screen. Uh, this area here, which is the apophysis of the uh, knee, of the uh, tibial uh, bone. So this is a tibial tuberosity, and this is the apophysis, and the patellar leg tendon is actually attached here. So as they become more uh, into exercise and, and all those things, this begins to tug on the tuberosity in, in the uh, forward direction, and then this, ca this causes a general, uh, I guess, uh, callus, being laid down on the tubercle and it becomes this, this area becomes more pronounced um, so and this is generally occurs during a period of so let's just talk about the age group here so the age group that you would expect it is between the 19 to 14 uh, sometimes even older than that uh, usually associated with rapid growth period and uh, a lot of exercise so a high amount of exercise so these are the kids that are uh, doing a lot of exercise it used to be very common in boys more common in boys and girls but it is becoming more common girls as well as they are starting to become more athletic and you know they have uh, involved in, in those things a little bit more. Uh, so let's talk about the clinical uh, clinical findings. Uh, so what can you expect clinically? Um, what they'll have is they'll t they tend to have uh, anterior knee pain uh, and it will also be raised. So it will be uh, you you. And, and sorry, this first finish is knee pain. And it gradually worsens with time. So it's gradually increasing uh, pain with time and with exercise. So you get uh, both of those uh, times there. And then on physical examination, uh, generally what you'll, you'll notice is when you touch this, uh, you, when you palpate it with your finger, you'll notice that it's tenderness. Uh, and there is a bony prominence. So you can actually sometimes visually see the pro bony prominence. And this is usually enough to clinch your uh, diagnosis. Uh, still though, you do want to do some uh, imaging just to rule out other causes, but imaging is not always necessary if you're pretty sure. Also, uh, to rule out other causes, it will not be warm, so this, it's not warm or erythematous. Uh, so if that is the case, you might want to start thinking something else. And you also want to examine the hip, uh, because sometimes it's referred, uh, referred pain. Uh, and so that's clinical, uh, again, imaging, not really necessary, but you might want to do it just to rule out other causes. So if, if you see something that's not in the uh, picture completely, you can do that. So what's the treatment? Um, this is generally benign and self-limiting. Uh, so there's really no need for any type of treatment. Uh, you can just do some type of supportive measures. And, you know, generally in the resolve uh, once the uh, growth plate cl closes. So basically after puberty, so once, once it closes, uh, and um, 6 to 18 months is, is usually how long uh, pa patients have this, and has a waxing waning course. Uh, so what type of, so again, we're not going to really treat much, but we do want to control the pain. Uh, NSAIDs are a great idea. Um, if, if they're doing sports, uh, which you can do, so, if, so say for example they're athletes and they don't want to stop doing their sports. Uh, you can give 12.5% dextrose with lidocaine. You can inject that, and that has worked pretty well. Also, uh, using ice after you know a game or something is also really good, and also using protective pad because again that tuberosity, this tuberosity is tender, and so you might you want to prevent it from uh, actually uh, getting hit. Uh, glucocorticoid injections, which are commonly used uh, for you know joint pain is contraindicated here. So do not use glucocorticoids. And this is because it's just associated with uh, subcutaneous atrophy. So they have noticed that complication. So generally not recommended here. Um, as far as sports, this is one of the conditions where uh, you actually, uh, playing sports is okay. Uh, the only thing is they don't want to kneel down too long or be in a squatting position too long. 
such as like you know if they're playing baseball they can't be one of the catchers so changing position where they don't necessarily need to do that is a good idea but overall they don't need to play sports uh, you do not want to give them crutches and definitely you know using a brace is actually contraindicated uh, because you do want to make sure that the, the bone that the muscle is doesn't become atrophied and the bone continues to grow uh, you know physiotherapy is also a good idea to maintain uh, you know just doing some stretching exercises and and maintain that uh, surgery if it continues to be painful uh, you can do surgery but you have to wait till uh, after the epiphyseal closure so uh, you will still be waiting anyways you know uh, for that one complication that does occur uh, very rarely but it, it's uh, worth mentioning uh, is is called uh, uh, genu recurvatum uh, and so that is basically when the uh, instead of the, the leg is no longer straight but is curved backwards and then forward so uh, this is going to be both of those conditions hope you guys enjoyed see you later